I know at the beginning when um, school resource officers started being integrated into the districts, a lot of parents feared the, the thought of, okay, we have an armed individual in our school. Sure. How's that going to affect everything? Sure. Talk to us about that mindset, per se. Now that you've been in there for years and, sure. and people really see how this program works, right. for the people who say, why do we need that officer in the school with a gun, sure. what would you say? Well, I would say um, it's a necessity, necessity based on what we're experiencing as a society as a whole. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, we had a negative situation where we had a trespasser come into the school. Um, I confronted that threat, you know, which I perceived at the time was a threat. And uh, communicating with that individual, it was clearly determined that he was not there for the purpose of education or official business. Therefore, I had to engage him in, with, the, with appropriate means and boundaries. And so, um, long story short, I wound up uh, having to tase the individual because he made it clear that he was there as a threat. Well, that was a very negative experience because we had to go into lockdown mode. Uh, we effected a full custodial arrest. Um, the trespasser was taken out of the school. But the very next day, it was interesting and it, uh, to hear the student body come to me and, and say, hey, uh, O-Rod, which is what they call me short for Officer Rodriguez. Uh, hey, I heard what happened and, you know, and, and they started shaking my hand. They started uh, applauding me and saying, hey, thanks for protecting us. So you can see how a negative situation turned into a positive situation. I also had feedback from the community as well and parents in central office saying, job well done, because this could have gone out of hand. It could have uh, involved other innocent people, but we were able to isolate it, address the issue, and in the minds and hearts of the parents, the community, that reinforced why there is a necessity for the school resource officer in the schools. And when you look at that situation as a whole, that's a negative per se situation, sure. but that's probably one half of one percent of everything that you're in those schools for. Correct. The positive reasons, as you talked about, being a mentor and solving problems on a daily basis. Correct. All right, um, Vince, I want to talk about Halloween safety centers. I know this is a huge part of neighborhood policing. We do it here in North County. Uh, we've done it for years. We have one of the biggest ones up at Jamestown Mall. I know how much work it is to put this thing on because I'm involved in it. Um, they're all over town. We wanted to have you on to uh, talk about the importance of these safety centers um, for the kids on Halloween night. It's a great place to go and uh, they're safe. That's, that's the key. Absolutely. In terms of why St. Louis County has stepped up to the plate and done this for all these years and it continues to be a success, what would be your answer to that? Well, we basically want a, a safe place for the children to go. They receive candy. Uh, they have their costumes looked at for safety. Um, and their, their parents, parents are always going to have questions. And there's officers on hand there to answer any questions or, uh, or concerns that the parents may have. Now these are all over town and you can go to the St. Louis County Police website to find any more information about these. We'll put a graphic up in a few moments here that will talk about the different specific places that they're at, but you can go to find out all the specific information about time and the, the schools and the different places that they will be at on the website. These are strategically located through the area and talk about how they're staffed and how the, the candy's given out and that um, it's a cooperative effort amongst a great amount of people and businesses. Correct. Um, a lot of the, the school resource officers will be staffing a lot of the uh, safety centers. Uh, neighborhood policing officers, uh, we will be floating between the, the area stations to make sure that they have uh, a good supply of candy, to make sure that they have a good supply of uh, glow necklaces uh, that we give out uh, for the kids to be higher visibility at night. When you look at the kids going out on the street, it's a very dangerous situation. No matter where you live, no matter what you're doing, this is the type of place, and there's several of them, where you can go and collect just as much candy. You know you're going to have police presence, and you know you're going to be safe. Absolutely. All right. We'll put that graphic up in a second. You can see all those sites. Once again, check the uh, St. Louis County Police website for more information on that. But when that kind of turns into what you're dealing with on a... Um, daily basis within the schools. Right. What do you tell the kids about uh, this Halloween evening? Be responsible. It is a holiday, but uh, ultimately there are uh, other kids of younger age that are out and about crossing roads, um, you know, asking for candy, having a good time. Um, if they don't need to be out and about, if it's not necessary, 
uh, stay home, you know, or walk with the, walk with the brother or sister. Be um, the eyes and ears for them. Um, and remember, again, um, law enforcement is always out, um, keeping an eye. So please, 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 please um, stay home unless you have to go to work. Um, just enjoy the evening at home. What would you say to a parent or individual within a subdivision who is keeping that eye out for those suspicious people? Because it's such a hard night with everybody dressed up to be able to tell who's legitimate, who's not legitimate in a subdivision. What would you tell a family about uh, trick-or-treating and safety on that night? Well, it's the old adage, Randy. If it doesn't feel right, if it doesn't look right, it probably isn't right. So give us a call. What about kids themselves? Um, in, in my subdivision, you see kids starting right when it gets dark, and then you'll have some kids knocking on the door at 9.30 and 10 o'clock. <laughs> the lights are off, I'm in bed, and uh, they're still knocking on the doors. Uh, your advice to the parents about you know, keeping these kids safe and what maybe they should wear, uh, reflective type tape, uh, any suggestions like that would be great. Correct. Uh, brightly colored costumes, uh, reflective type tape. Uh, like I said, at the safety centers, we give away glow necklaces. They, they can wrap them around their wrists and use them as bracelets, however the children want to wear them. Uh, if they want more than one, we'll give them more than one if we have it. Um, as far as the parents are concerned, make sure your children are back with a, a, a respectable time. You know, nine o'clock is when our safety centers close down. Uh, historically, most people at nine o'clock have turned their porch light out. When you look at the duties, and we'll talk about neighborhood policing in a second as far as the future, but as far as school resource officers and how successful this program has been, what do you see for the future? I see this program uh, continuing and growing. Uh, we're always getting continuous education in regards to how to be um, uh, professionals in the schools. Um, I also see um, county government, family court, uh, merging with the police department and the school districts and trying to come up with programs, uh, procedures that will enable us to work collectively and understand each other. Um, Unfortunately, because of what we're experiencing, in, you know, in theaters and schools, um, it, it is a necessity to have um, an armed police officer to, there to protect uh, and maintain a safe school climate. Education is important, um, and so what we're trying to do is not only take a reactive approach to outside or internal threats as well, but we're also trying to allow our kids to to learn um, that. Um, a police officer with or an armed uh, uniform officer is not necessarily a bad thing. So um, I'm, I'm actually wanting to go out and talk more with the community, uh, parent groups, allow them to see uh, the responsibility and the role of the uh, school resource officer so that they gain more understanding and feel more comfortable uh, and building those relationships with them as well because then they can address you on a first name basis. It seems like in this society right now that there's such a negative stigma put on sure. the drive and dedication of children at all school levels sure. to succeed and you look at the graduation rates and they're just unbelievably low over the past 20 years or so. Sure. You work with these kids on a daily basis. What would you say to parents out there about their kids in that atmosphere when they're away from home? Because it seems like you think you know your kids, mm -hmm. they get away from you and then they're the real kids per se. What would you say to parents? Well, as a parent, I would say, you know, uh, be the parent, not the pal. You know, you have to start when they're young as well. Uh, building the, the love relationship, showing them what's, what's good, what's bad, what's proper, what's improper. Because a lot of times, if, you don't ha if you're not the parent early, by the time they get to the high school age, they're going to begin to experiment, look for that attention, that love from outside sources that maybe they're not receiving at home. So I believe that if you build a positive family relationship and it doesn't necessarily have to have a father and mother sometimes they're single parent families but you can still be uh, a positive influence to your child so that they can go to you when there is a need when there is a question and they know that may be a consequence but ultimately um, they trust the parent to say I made a mistake um, and and that's what I like to incorporate as well that's why I like to use myself as a father figure there, you know, uh, because, and I have 2,000 kids or so, because I want them to know that they can come to me, even if they made a mistake, let's correct it and address the, the situation. Or let's say they're thinking about something. Sometimes kids will come to say, you know, there's a party uh, this weekend, I'm thinking about going. Well, let me explain some things, you know. Uh, and when they see that and they understand that, 
um, they're able to make a, a better choice for themselves. I thought I had it tough with three kids. <laughs> 2000. <laughs> I feel for you. <laughs> yes, it's, but it's nice to go home and relax, uh, you know. Yeah, you don't bring all <laughs> those problems and diapers and everything else home with you. Huh? Exactly. <laughs> and Vince, uh, as we start to wrap things up here today on the show, as far as neighborhood policing, you know, it's been around and, and grown and we've seen its success. What do you see for the uh, future of this program? Well, for the future, I'd like to see it expand. Um, I have the pleasure of running the Citizens Academies in the West County Precinct. Uh, which have always turned out very successful for us. I have anywhere from 25 to 30 participants in each class. Uh, Chief Fitch likes us to be um, uh, transparent as an organization, and I think that the Citizens Academies are a great way for the citizens of St. Louis County to, to see what their tax money is being spent on, how it's being spent, why it's being spent, uh, I always have everybody come up to me at graduation and tell me, great class. Uh, I have numerous repeat, repeat customers. I've got people that have been seven or eight times. That's what I was going to say. No matter where you're at in St. Louis County, you can check with your local precinct and find out about these citizens' academies. And as you mentioned, I know there's people here in the North County area that have gone through these 10 and 12 times. Very interesting, very hands-on, and you definitely do get a chance to learn what you guys do on a daily basis. I think a lot of people take that for granted, what goes on while they're sleeping or while they're, they're at work, what you guys are doing right. out there every single day. I appreciate it. St. Louis County appreciates it, and um, as we wrap things up, your advice for Halloween night about uh, telling the families to come out and enjoy these safety centers. Come on out, you know, bring your, kid, bring your children by, uh, have their costumes inspected by an officer, um, just have fun, you know, it's, that's what the night is meant for, let's, let's have fun, let's be safe. Sounds good. One more time, for uh, any more information that you need on the Halloween Safety Centers, just simply go to the St. Louis County Police website to find out more or contact your local precinct. Uh, Vince and Charlie, thank you so much for what you do, and thanks appreciate for your Randy. time today. We appreciate thank it. You. Thank you, Randy. Hope you enjoyed the show. Have a good evening. We'll see you tomorrow night right here on Priority One. Our day starts very early. We never know exactly when we'll have a full house, so we have to be ready at all hours. We have regularly scheduled deployments that come through, but things rarely run on schedule, so we have a lot of surprises. We have birthdays, we have family reunions, we even had a wedding here once. But whatever they need, we'll do our very best to see they get it. If they need travel arrangements or use of a computer, if they need to change diapers or dry someone's tears, we can help them. It's the very least we can do, considering what they do for us. If you want to make a difference in the life of someone serving our country, if you really want to make a difference, the USO is how it's done. Help us help them. The USO depends on the generosity of the American people, people just like you. To find out how you can help, visit us at USO.org. The USO, until everyone comes home.